Hey YouTube, this is Ace Painter and welcome to a beginner's Reason 3.0 tutorial. Now Reason 3.0 is an excellent piece of software for getting started with music production from your desktop. It's also a great way for you to practice um, some things like um, piano playing, keyboard control, and understanding a lot of the basic terminology and effects that go into producing modern electronic music. Now I'm assuming that you have a keyboard with you or some type of MIDI controller. You should, and if you have it connected up to your PC, we're going to check to make sure that it's functional. Okay. Uh, what we want to do first is go to Edit Menu, choose Preferences, and in the Advanced MIDI Control you're going to select for Bus A, you're going to select the MIDI control which represents your keyboard. If it's a USB keyboard, you might see something that represents it right here, like mine, USB key station. If it's plugged in directly to your sound card's MIDI import, you might see something like this. It says MIDI input-output. Now, I happen to be using the MIDI input-output, but yours is going to be different. Next, we're going to go to the Control Surfaces and Keyboards tab, and we're going to make sure that our keyboard appears. If it does not, choose Add, select your model and we can test it by choosing the input that the MIDI uh, keyboard is plugged into hit find and if I press a key I should see some change right here that's what we're looking for that's how we confirm that our keyboard is set up properly if it's not if you get nothing at this point then you'll have to go back and consult your keyboard documentation okay so let's get right to it. Um, when you start Reason, you're going to probably get the default song. I think it's called After Six. I'm not sure what it's called, but you want to let's just go ahead and create a blank slate. We want nothing in here. All right. And I'm going to delete the only device that I've created. Now, when you first start Reason, the only thing that's going to be present is this hardware interface. Uh, the first thing you're, you're going to want to do is create a mixer and uh, by the way you can right click in the rack and it'll give you the whole list of options of things you can create we're gonna create a 14 to mixer All right, and this by default is called mixer 1 you can call it whatever you want so we now have a mixer which uh, gives us 14 channels that we can program instruments onto and the next step is to create an instrument now, uh, a word about the way Reason works. If I were to right click and choose an instrument to create, whatever the last um, input device, in this case a mixer, it could also be an effect like a reverb or a delay, whatever the last input device w exists, whatever the last one, how do I say this? The last input device is going to be automatically connected to the instrument which I create. Okay, now I just created a subtractor. You should do the same. Right click in a blank space and choose subtractor. And it'll appear here. Now press tab. This will flip to the back of the rack. This is where the actual routing is accomplished. This is where we assign which audio channels, left and right, are going to be sent to which devices. Okay? Now, in this case, what we see here is that my audio output from the subtractor is being sent to channel 1 of the mixer. Now, the subtractor is a monophonic device. It has only one channel, and therefore the right channel on this device is unoccupied. If we take a look at this, we can see that the word subtractor 1, which is the name of my device, appears in both the mixer and my device. If I rename the device by clicking on this little piece of paper, I can um, also change the device or change the labeling in any device that it's routed to. Now, whenever you create a device in Reason, it starts off with the init patch. In some cases, this will not produce any sound at all. The subtractor and the maelstrom are both generators which will produce sound based on an algorithm, regardless of whether you choose any any default patch or not. Now, a patch is just a way to refer to a collection of settings just knob tweaks and parameters 
to certain values here and there which will constitute a certain sound. In this case, this sound is called bass guitar. And we do get a pretty rich bassy sound out of that. But the subtractor is of course not limited to bass. We also have a wide variety of percussion sounds, pads, and so on. Feel free to experiment with these at your leisure. Now this is a particularly unique patch. This one is called Falling Lead. It plays a continuous sound, but when I let go, it has a bit of a descending tone to it. You can choose whatever patch you like. It really doesn't matter for the purpose of this tutorial. Now let's talk about how to program these instruments. At, at this point you should have a keyboard set up and when you huh, if we take a look at the sequencer down below each instrument that we have connected is represented by a line I have the mixer which uh, I can control with the keyboard I have the subtractor which we just created and a device which is actually technically that is the subtractor because I've renamed it it also renames my subtractor patch now to send MIDI controls to an instrument you must first select it by clicking on this oh you know what you can't see that at the very left of my naming there is a keyboard icon you must have this selected in order to send MIDI um, information to that device now I do have it selected for the device which is my subtractor so when I press a key on the keyboard we get some tones out of it All right. Now that is the basic way to choose your instrument settings. I can very easily create a new instrument and I'll just load up a quick drum track and now that my keyboard is set to Dr. Rex 1 anytime I press a key it's going to trigger one of my drum sounds. Now let's go back to our subtractor. That's what we want to work with here. What I'm going to do is press the record button and that's going to tell Reason that whenever I start playing, it's going to record any MIDI signals that I send to it. So let's do just that. And one more word before we record, there is a click function which will give you a audible tempo in case you don't have a drum pattern already set up. We're going to use the click function for the first time we record. Let's listen. And let's play. note that I made and this one as well as you see uh, whenever we're, we're recording it's going to represent our notes by little blocks in the sequencer view but when we choose this button on the left which switches between arrange mode and edit mode we'll see our notes appear <clears throat> and these notes correspond to the piano keys on the left If we want to, we can manipulate these notes, move them up and down throughout the pitch scale, um, change their length, and also change where they are triggered. That is their start time. There are some other things that we can control. <clears throat> At the bottom we have these velocity ranges. This basically represents how hard you press the key. And by choosing a high velocity, you might get a louder sound, or a sound that lets more higher frequencies through. That will all depend on the way your instrument is configured. But typically, the default setting is that the long or the higher velocity notes will be louder. So, uh, let's go back to the arrange mode. What we'll see here is that there are notes played through, I guess, bars, what is this, bar 3 through bar 9. Now, you have a selection of tools up on the top here. The selection tool will let you choose regions. The pencil tool in the sequencer mode, or the arrange mode, will let you mark regions. 
And once you have a region marked,